This meeting is being recorded. Okay. Uh, so these instructions are for Google Cloud in order to set up a VM to do uh, the first part of the lab, uh, which is running a piece of malware. I will show you both uh, doing it this way and using a tool. You can pick whichever one of the two you want to do. Uh, so number one, you'll need to create a Ubuntu VM and specifically a Ubuntu 18.04. You'll need to ensure that you're selecting uh, the N1.2 standard. So it should have two CPUs and eight gigabytes of memory. When you are logged into the system, uh, you'll do uh, these commands in order to copy the GitHub repository that has what you'll do. And then you'll run the mod two lab it's going to take some time to complete because it's going through a number of steps. Once it's all done, though, you'll see something like this. And when you see this, it is fully installed and is ready to go. Then, seeing the IP address, the, the internal IP address, You'll connect to that from your Windows server. And you'll want to connect to that, whatever IP address you have, at port 3391. Then you'll be provided with a login, and you'll use these credentials, username BACCC2 with password BACCC1. You'll select the default config. And then you'll be logged into that Linux VM to the GUI where you can import the XP OVA and you'll be able to run uh, a, you'll be able to run Windows XP on the cloud. This is definitely something that you should take your time with. So don't, don't rush all through it. Number one, ensure that when you create your, v your Ubuntu VM for this lab, it is in the same region and zone as the Windows VM that you'll use to connect. Ensure that it is Ubuntu and it is Ubuntu 18.04. Also ensure that it's an N1 because the N1s can do nested virtualization. Then you'll follow these simple commands to set up that Linux VM. When you see this, it's up and running. Then log in from your, from your Windows VM to that Linux VM on the internal IP address, adding 3391. So it goes to specifically that port. As you see in my example, I connected to my module to Linux VM internal IP address at port 3391. Then you'll be presented with the logon screen. You have the credentials in bold. You'll use default configuration. Then you'll, you'll set up your virtual machine. You'll get this error. You hit continue. And then uh, you can enable uh, drag and drop. You'll need this last item in order to copy over uh, the various pieces of malware that you'll use in the next section. Um, I have given you uh, uh, on that GitHub repository a number of malware for you to work with. It is in 75, module two. Here's the in-class module. This is a zip file that you'll need for this first lab. 
this zip file does have a password and the password is infected all lowercase. Uh, this guide will help you in taking the malware in the, in the way that I set it up uh, into being able to execute. So what I have done on my end in order to prevent you to accidentally infecting other systems is the, the malware that is hidden within this zip file has all been encrypted, or not encrypted, it's been encoded in base64. So what you'll need to do, once you're in that Windows XP, you'll need to use my base64 uh, zip file that I have right here. You'll use that to decode the file. And here's the, a, a, um, the syntax, and here's the example of taking malware one and turning it into an executable. You'll see it wherever you, wherever you uh, did the, the decoding. Like for example, here it was done on the desktop. You'll see the file that you created versus the files that came with that zip file that are, are uh, unexecutable on purpose. When you done the, de uh, the decoding, you would double click to run and it will infect the system as it should. Your job will be to infect the Windows XP machine and try to disinfect it. WannaCry is a very finicky piece of ransomware. Once it's running, you have about an hour to decrypt using uh, the tool called WannaKiwi. And I should have given, yes, here's the tool. WannaKiwi. WannaKiwi has a good success rate, but it is not guaranteed. That is how the writers of WannaCry made it. So that uh, if someone has the the malware, it's not just an easy way to, to fix. So you'll run WannaKiwi within the system you infected, and you may or may not get the, uh, the keys to decrypt and be able to, to use the system again. Now, mind you, once you have infected a Windows XP machine and you've you fought back against the piece of malware, and you record how you did it by taking things like screenshots, at the end, you're gonna want to turn off that VM and go back to the instructions earlier on, on importing a new instance. So you'll go back to the third step in the in-class assignment prep, import the VM again, and then you'll be good to go for the next piece of malware. There's about three or four pieces of malware in the in-class assignment, and there's about another four in the lab. So in total, you'll be working with about eight different pieces of malware. Again, you should be doing this all within the cloud and all within these, these instructions that I provided you. If you follow the instructions, correctly, you will not infect yourself. The key is stored in memory only for about an hour. So uh, with WannaCry, you'll need to be very quick. There is another way for you to do this lab, and that is with the tool called AnyRun. With AnyRun, you can, uh, where is it? I right hear, I think it's in the less hunt. With any run, you'll create an account. I already have an account. Oh, I thought I did. I didn't make a new account. Um, you make a new account and you can uh, do essentially the same things just on their infrastructure.
Hey, it logged in. Yeah, so I can make a new task here and say, oh, I'm going to run a Windows 7 box. Uh, I can upload a file and it will it will run Windows 7 and uh, execute the piece of malware. So here's an example, uh, three screenshots of the first piece of malware, the uh, WannaCry. Here it is before, during, and when it's done. It also shows you all the running processes that happened, the amount of CPU that it, that it took during the process of executing, the amount of RAM, like you see all this stuff. My suggestion is to do both. Both run it in GCP, following the instructions I provided, and also run it in any run in order to get the biggest picture as to how these eight pieces of malware that I've given you work. Your job will then, the thing that you submit to me would be uh, the steps that you took. So you have your XP set up, you ran this malware one, malware two, three, or four. It did X, Y, and Z, and this is what I used to disinfect it. Again, you do not want to run this. If you're, especially for uh, all of you who are on Windows, you do not want to run this natively. You don't want to download the zip files that I have in my GitHub repository, the in-class mod two and the mod two lab. You don't want to run these on your local system because they are infected. You want to run this all from the cloud from a safe place where you won't accidentally infect yourself. This is why I'm giving you very detailed instructions on how to do this in GCP and also provided you a site that you can uh, run these pieces of malware interactively without affecting you. Uh, to get the biggest picture, on the pieces of malware, run, run the same malware on both. Run, run the same piece of malware on GCP and in any run. Because it's not a matter of if, it's when you are going to have to fight a piece of malware and you want to know how can you prevent this either from happening or when it happens, how do you stop the spread? Any questions? This is going to be a very fun lab. And yes, you will be dealing with real malware. If you are not able to stop WannaCry in the first hour, then just follow the instructions in the, in the assignment and lab prep, get rid of that VM, import a new VM, and start over. So if you if want a Kiwi doesn't figure it out in that hour, just delete and start over. And don't feel bad that you weren't able to solve it in, in the first hour. It is very much a hit and miss. And again, that was all built on purpose. because the whole point of it was to prevent people from getting their data back instead of having them pay. Irving, just really quick. Um, these are the only two VMs that we need, right? You'll need a Windows VM, a standard Windows VM to connect, and you'll need a Linux VM that will act as the host for for this XP box that you'll use to run the malware on. 
Does that make sense? Wait, so we use the Windows box to connect to the XP box? Yeah, uh, yes. So like I said, in your setup, you're going to make a Ubuntu 18.04 VM. It has to be N1 standard two, which means two CPUs and eight gigabytes of memory. Okay. And when you make it, you have to ensure that it is in the same region and zone as your Windows VM, because they need to be able to talk to each other. The way that, that, the, that the script that you run sets up everything up is it puts the XP machine in an isolated environment. So that, that will be fine. But in order to interact with the Linux VM that is hosting the XP victim, they need to be on the same network together. This is why in my example, I'm showing you that I'm not connecting to the external IP address. I'm going to the internal IP address. So this is me on my Windows box connecting to the internal IP address of my Linux box at port 3391. And then I'll get this prompt. I'll log in using these credentials. And then I can import the, the XP system and I'll be able to do anything and everything I need. It's not so much how many screenshots you submit, but the information you provide. So you're, you're essentially writing a report of, uh, of malware one. You already know that malware one is WannaCry. So then you'll write on from the moment you ran it on your XP machine, what happened? And then uh, your efforts in using one a Kiwi to decrypt. So what you could, a snapshot, a screenshot could be the success of getting the decryption key and, and stopping, um, stopping uh, WannaCry. You can do a video. But like I said, WannaCry is a very finicky, uh, piece of malware. It, you may not be successful, so do not feel bad. You just try again. And then when you have succeeded with WannaCry, you move on to the others. Because remember, you have a, about eight or nine pieces of malware to work with. So don't get too stuck for a long time on one. Use, uh, use your time wisely and you know, tackle the the, uh, the pieces of malware in the in-class assignment and in the lab. Doing the same thing, writing a report for each and every one of these. But I, I can't stress enough that if you are running on a Windows box, you really want to do all of this within the cloud. That way it does not touch your system in any way, shape or form. As long as you follow my instructions of doing everything on the cloud, you will be fine. Yes, that could be perfectly fine. You can take screenshots with the description and submit it as a PDF. That is perfectly accessible. And yes, that, I mean, that's, to me, that's the best way to learn about malware is actually playing with it, not just talking about it. What's the point of talking about it if you're not actually doing it? No, yeah, 
Yeah, seriously. I like hands-on. I like interactive. I don't like dabbling in the world of uh, theory for too long. It gets pretty boring. Exactly. You can't learn without applying. And what better way to apply than actually get your hands on it? Because you won't know until you try. So have loads of fun infecting a Windows XP machine over and over again. Like I said, after every infection, destroy that VM and create another one and start all over again. If you get stuck at any point, please feel free to reach out to me on Discord and I, we, can, we can do um, share screen and, and whatnot. Feel free to work together. I mean, that's why you have a text and voice channel for the class. So, you know, jump in there and talk to one another. You do not in you do not need to work in isolation. You can work together. It's not cheating. It's not, uh, it, yeah, it's none of that. Work together. This is very much a interactive collaborative class. Not a, I'm all on my own. I'll think about doing something, but not actually do it. No, 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 we, we do here. We don't talk, we do. So are there any other questions about the, uh, the work ahead? Excellent. And then you, uh, anybody have any problems logging on to NetLab and doing the labs? Those are very straightforward labs. And what you submit is just basically a little write up of what you did. Doesn't have to be in great detail because I know NetLab is very straightforward. And I need to get rid of these discussions, ignore these discussions. So you just have the in-class prep, <clears throat> the assignment, the lab, the three net labs and the quiz, no, uh, no news discussions. If you see them, let me know and I'll remove them because they should not be there. Excellent. Yeah, you can submit some screenshots too. You don't have to submit a screenshot for every little thing you do in your NetLab submission. Because like I said, it, I know that it's very straightforward. It is great practice and I highly recommend it, but I also get it. So I'm not gonna be all stingy about that. So with that, I will stop the recording.